Hello and welcome to this very first brew day on my Brutals B80 Pro. Today I'm going to brew this beer and I mean exactly this beer. Because here in my Bratwurst glass, beer glass, I have the first batch I brewed on my Brutals, my Munichir Helles. It's the everyday beer that they drink in Bavaria in Germany and it's a really nice barbecue and summer beer. But the focus today is not mainly on the beer, it's on my Brutals machine and how my first brew day went. So let's go back seven weeks and see how my brew day was. And brew day is finally here. Today I'm going to brew on my Brutals B80 for the very first time. About three and a half years ago I brewed on the Brutals B80 at the Bryggsel, uh, my local uh, homebrew supplier, uh, and we did a video about it. Um, but I didn't do much of the hands-on job on the Brutals. It was uh, Eivind, uh, the manager of the store, that did all the job. I just uh, talked and filmed. So today will be the very first uh, brew day for me with the Brutals where I am in control and I have nobody to ask for help. So yesterday I filled the B80 with 55 liters of mash water and I crushed my grains. There are uh, about 15 and a half kilos grain in this uh, in the malt bill and to make things even harder for myself on my first brew day on the B80 I'm doing a fermenter top up where I'm uh, adding water uh, after the boil is finished to top up the volume to 78 liters that's going on the unit tank. We'll come back to that uh, that method later. I have preheated the water to 50 degrees centigrade, uh, and now let's take a look at uh, the brutals. Okay, now I'm in uh, manual mode, but I'm going to use the brew father integration with the brutals, so I can transfer my recipe directly from brew father uh, and into the brutals. And in case you haven't heard of brew father app before, it's uh, I think it's the best brewing software, either if you're a professional brewer or uh, amateur like uh, us home brewers. Uh, it keeps track of all your recipes, your batches, you can log your tilts or eye spindles. And it can really help you with your brewing from the recipes to the beer is finished. Okay, let's take a closer look at the display. Oh, wait, I have to do this. Nice. Okay, so I go to recipes and here you can see I have already done it, but to show you, I can delete it and then I'll transfer it again. So here is Brewfather on my phone and I can go to my batch today, Helles F80 uh, and uh, on the B80 also. And I can I go to the brewing tab and here we have Brew controller send preparing batch for export. Okay, so now I can just enter this code. I'll press the brew folder icon and I'll uh, type in the code on my phone and press OK. And let's see how long it takes for the brutals to find the recipe. Okay, there it is. Helles F80. Uh, and all the, the numbers, uh, all the data is here. Uh, it says that I'm going to use 59.7 liters of mash water and 23.9 liters of sparge water. But I have lowered this number by 5 liters, so I'm using 55 liters of mash water and I'll add 5 liters here to the sparge water. Um, since it's my first time Brewing on the Brutals, I, have, I don't know the numbers yet, so I'll just uh, use my gut feeling and uh, uh, use 55 instead. And here is the mash steps. You can see the 55 degrees, 63, 70 and uh, mash out at 77. And here's my hop additions. There's no hop stand today, so okay. And now let's tell the Brutals that we want to brew this beer. Start brewing, yes. 
prepared to brew. Yeah, all my valves are adjusted correctly. Yeah, we have filled in the water. Start heating now, I guess I'll push. Yeah, they're covered with water. And once more. Okay, heating to strike at 59 degrees C. And I guess I'll have to control the pump manually. So now we have 6,000 watts heating up our water to 59 degrees. I have uh, one uh, connected to that socket and the other one is behind here. So it uses two power cords. That's really clever. And I have the main power cord which uh, powers the control unit and the screen. And one of the heating elements I have plugged that into that side. Uh, because the other plug is just the extra heating element and I have my sparge water heater there and when I'm starting to heat that one up I might have to pull out the brew tools uh, extra power and plug the sparge water heater power in. So that brew tools cord I can just plug in and out as much as I want without disturbing the control. Okay let's take a look. I guess it's supposed to be hanging on the handle like that. Okay, here we can see on the left side uh, that the dip tube down uh, at the, almost the bottom, it pushes the water out and you can see the water flowing uh, on top of the water at the surface. And on the right side, that dip tube is adjustable and it sucks the water out and through the pump at the bottom and back in again on the left side. In addition to my initial order from Brutals, I had to order some more parts. Uh, I had this uh, extra elbow and some other parts that I saw when I had uh, mounted everything up that I, uh, I was missing some parts. I wasn't able to get everything I needed because the shops were sold out, uh, but I have almost the setup that I need um, to make the brew day uh, smooth and easy but some parts I need to order later. And about the valve setup, I think I have to make some um, adjustments to it, but it works okay now, I'll, I think. Uh, as you know, this is my first brew day, so I haven't tested it in a, a real life situation. I have just been doing some testing, but I think it will be okay. Maybe you can hear the sound from the Brutals. Uh, strike temperature reached, okay. Now we can uh, add our uh, uh, grains. Okay, I shouldn't have uh, pressed the OK already. The timer goes down. <laughs> okay, uh, off with the pump and in with the grains and uh, of course the malt pipe. I was a bit too quick to push the OK button. I didn't know uh, it started <laughs> immediately. Um, yeah, and uh, I have to say, uh, I hope the brew day will be uh, okay, but I know from experience that something will fuck up. And here is the malt pipe. I have the um, laser cut filter and the overflow pipe in it. When I brewed with the Eivind at the Bryggsel, uh, we had the malt pipe in the upper position uh, when we added the, the grains and then we lowered it slowly down into the water. But I haven't uh, the muscles to do it, and my uh, uh, winch is a uh, little bit offset from center because of my spidle was uh, positioned a bit uh, further to the right side. So I'll uh, have it in the lower position and add the grains this way. And uh, here is two thirds of my uh, malt bill. The rest is in the other bucket. I have to put the, the hat on. Okay, here is the hat. I'm not going to mash with the hat. I'm just having it on now so I doesn't uh, spill any grains inside of the hole. Okay, then I think we're uh, ready to mash in. Okay, the question is, should I scoop it in or just pour it in? I have always poured in the malt, so I, I will stick to that. Okay, 
the first time malt sees my brutals and vice versa. Okay, I can't pour everything in at once. I have to stir. At least I have to stir on the Braumeister. Okay, that was the first bucket and there's a very good amount of space in here. It doesn't feel full at all. At this point it was already starting to get a little bit uh, tight in the mold pipe of the Braumeister, so uh, obviously this is bigger. I can see that the diameter is larger so uh, and uh, the mold capacity is 20 kilos versus the Braumeister is uh, I think it's 13. And the rest of the malt is here underneath my malt mill. And let's get that in as well. Oh, uh, by the way, I have crushed malts at 1.2 millimeters. Uh, that's what uh, Brutus recommends for the B80. And let's just gently stir it in. It's starting to get thicker now, that's for sure, but uh, still there's plenty of space so I have no doubt that this malt pipe can handle 20 kilos. Uh, this was about 15 and a half kilos. Yeah, I saw a dough bowl there. I have to get all the malts uh, wet. Unless they're getting wet, there's no use uh, in uh, having them in here. Uh, yeah, there we have a dough bowl. Let me pick that one up. Yeah, this is a good example of a dough ball. Inside here, is it could, maybe you can see it on the camera, it's just the dry uh, malt and that's no doing no use for us. We have to get the starch wet so um, the starch can be broken down uh, by the enzymes uh, until the fermentable sugars. Feels good now, it's loose and nice. Um, on the Braumeister it was much harder. I could never do it as easy as this on the Braumeister. I can lower this one down a bit. I'm not supposed to use the hat today. I'm going to use the this um, I'm going to use this manifold instead. But at first I'm gonna just gonna circulate the water. So I'll start the pump. Brutals recommends uh, doing just the circulation um, in the kettle for the first 20 minutes and then we can start circulating the water through the top here. And I'll mount this one. No shit, I can't mount it now. Yeah, maybe like that. And like... Okay, this is not a how-to video, this is just uh, the first time uh, some guy in Norway does this. Okay, and then I'll lower it a bit. Like that. It feels like it's sitting there by itself. But you're supposed to try clamp it uh, down. And then the end of the hose goes into the hole. So here's my salts. I'm going to add them in just a second. Uh, but, but first I'll add my lactic acid. I'm using this syringe to add 15 milliliters of uh, lactic acid to the mesh. Uh, this is to adjust the pH uh, until about 5.3. Okay, that's 15 milliliters. Just pour it in. And here is the salts I found on the internet, the numbers to dial in, and I added those numbers into Brewfather. I made a water profile, and it calculates with my Norwegian tap water what salts and what amounts to add. So I just stir them out in some cold water to, uh, yeah, bigger chance of getting everything dissolved in the mesh here. So I'll just pour them on top. 
So I'll just stir the lactic acid and the salts in the molds. And this uh, manifold obviously makes it harder to stir. So I should have added the uh, lactic acid and, um, and the salts before I had the, the, the manifold on top here. I found another dough bowl. Okay. I think we're about good to uh, start circulating. Uh, not just through the kettle, but also through the manifold here. So I'll just raise it up a bit so we can more easily see the um, water circulating through it. Move this valve a bit and we can see it starts to circulate. So I guess I have to power up the pump a bit. The problem here could be that I'm circulating with too much water and then the level will rise and it could go over the brim and taking with it uh, some of the grains. Then we could have a real party with the grains down here. But this is the overflow pipe. So this is, uh, it works like a drainage. So if water comes uh, to these holes, the, the water will uh, obviously go into the holes and down to the bottom. Uh, so it will prevent the mold pipe from uh, from overflowing. Yeah, and now you can see that I'm uh, pumping more into the mold pipe than uh, it, that, <laughs> that will uh, go through the mold bed. So in a few minutes or seconds, I think we can see if the overflow pipe really works. Yeah, it's getting there. You can see now that the water has reached the filter. And let's just keep the pump uh, at this speed to see if the overflow flow pipe actually works. It seems to have uh, stopped uh, getting any higher. As long as it doesn't get clogged up, uh, I think it will uh, work. But we don't need to circulate uh, that much when we know it goes through the overflow. Uh, it was just to test it, so I'll just lower the pump a bit and see how much less water gets pumped in. We have some beeping going on and it says it's going to mass step number two out of four, 63 degrees for 30 minutes. I really like the nice overview of the stats so you can keep a good eye on the pro progress. So the mash is uh, mashing <laughs> and uh, while it's uh, mashing we can take a little look at our valve setup. So with th these three valves in this position uh, I steer the wart up here and you can see uh, this hose uh, has our wart in it. It's starting to get uh, some color and it pumps uh, right into the kettle. I'm not 100% uh, happy with this setup because the side glass here uh, is connected through the outpost of the chiller so at this stage I can't see the wart and so it really should be somewhere else it, maybe it should be right at the start here so either if you're just um, bypassing the chiller or using the chiller you can see the wart so at this point I have turned the pump down to 20% because uh, the overflow pipe uh, had too much work to do. And now we can see it's almost, almost no circulation at all. Uh, so I don't know how fast the water flows through the malt. And also you can see here in the little crack between the malt pipe and the kettle, you can see that there's some small pieces of uh, malt uh, flow, flowing through there. But there's no big grains or anything like that. So I guess the filter does its job, that laser cut filter, and keeps our wort uh, clear of uh, any big grains. Yeah, we're uh, midway through the mash and you can see that I have filled the mold pipe, pipe with a lot more uh, water and the overflow pipe is almost flooded. The reason for this is that I used this uh, external temperature measurement device to measure the temperature in the mold pipe. 
and it was 10 degrees uh, colder inside the malt pipe than outside the malt pipe and the temp temperature the, that the brew tools was uh, using and targeting the temperature for so i had to circulate a lot more than i previously did because i just had a very little uh, amount of circulation so now the temperature has risen a lot after i did that uh, but now I see that the overflow pipe almost can't uh, uh, handle all the um, circulation, so I have to turn the pump down a bit again. Uh, and I have stirred the mash a few times, um, and it's a bit tricky to stir it because of the arms of the sparge manifoil. So now at least I have 64 degrees. Ah, there, okay, it changes a bit when I steer this around. Yeah, 4, 65, 67. It's uneven down here. I guess I should have taken notice of that before I did. Um, because if the temperature is too low, we can't get that um, uh, conversion of the starch that we want. So we will have um, less of a yield from our mashing. And that means lower original gravity and less flavor and alcohol in the final product. Okay, mashing is uh, completed. I got the message on the screen. Uh, and now it's time to sparge. So first impressions of the mashing process on the Brutals is that it's a bit more manual labor than I thought it would be. Maybe rice hulls will solve that uh, uh, lack of circulation because that's the problem it didn't circ the mash didn't circulate enough uh, so the temperature got uh, too low and yeah so um, but remember it was my very first time doing this so maybe it was my fault I don't know okay so now it's time to sparge and that means lifting up the mold pipe until it's uh, upright position. There's uh, three small legs on the mold pipe, on the bottom of, bottom of the mold pipe that uh, locks on place on top of the, the rim here. So I have my uh, uh, hoist, winch, I don't know what the English word for tallia uh, er. Hvem faen er som vet det egentlig? Uh, so I'll, but, but it's not centered on uh, uh, here it's a bit more to the right side so I think I need to help it a bit to get it into position uh, there are some uh, wooden beams up uh, in over my ceiling uh, that uh, the winch is uh, screwed into so it can stand the weight of the mold pipe now uh, the automation has stopped, so now I will I have to adjust the heating and the pump manually from now on. Uh, that means sparging and boiling. Okay, so let's see how this goes. Um, I did a test lift with the empty mold pipe. And uh, then I um, saw that there wasn't very much room. Uh, for errors. Uh, if you lift this too high, you won't be able to get it back on the track. <laughs> uh, it will be very hard to uh, steer it onto the top of the rod. So, yeah, you can see it wants to move to the right. Not very... Uh, <laughs> that's not a big surprise. <laughs> so I have to help it a bit. And uh, I guess I'll have to somehow um, move my uh, winch a bit more to the left. So much water in there, so this is really heavy. Now I can see the hooks. That was one. And two, and the third one locked in there. 
so I guess I can. Uh, one on the back here isn't quite over the edge. There it's over the edge, all three of them. So now I can set it back on top and it stays on top by itself. So I'll just keep this one connected because I'm going to, after the sparge, I will of course remove the mold pipe. I'm just hanging this here. Okay, that was uh, a lot more heavy than uh, what I was used to with the Braumeister mold pipe. But it's because this was totally full with the, both the grains and the water. Yeah, and you can see the, the overflow pipe. Haha, <laughs> totally clogged up. Well, at least now it, uh, the water uh, goes through quite easily. You can hear the water going through uh, out of the mold pipe and into the kettle. Before I start uh, the heating elements to get up the boil, I'll, uh, I think I'll wait a little bit so the kettle gets fuller. Now it's about this full. Uh, I don't see the heating elements, so they are uh, good uh, and covered. But I'll wait a little bit to, to let the water flow through before I start the sparge. And sparging here is totally different from what I was used to on the Brownmaster. In this part I'm really looking forward to because I have connected my sparge water heater onto the valve over there. So when I'm sparging I'll just um, switch the valve to another position and the sparge water will flow through this same system as the mesh did. That's really clever. Okay, I have opened up this and it goes through here. That one is open on all three sides. So the pump will get access to my sparge water and it will pump it uh, back in to, no, not in back into the kettle, but uh, I've adjusted this one so it will pump just up, up center. So I guess I can test by starting the bump. Yeah, there it goes. So now we're sparging and then I can also turn on the heat element. I have no idea how many percent, 60. And I guess the boil time will start uh, counting down when it has reached uh, boil. I guess I can just to make sure that I don't pump anything in here. I can block that valve. But I guess I should be okay now. Okay. I understand the valves, but I have to think before turning them the right direction. <laughs> so back up here, we can see, yeah, there's clear liquid in the hose that means yeah you can also see it there it's just water coming out so that means it's from our sparge water heater okay i'll turn the pump down and uh, i can use my gloves on the screen that's super nice yeah my sparge water is almost uh, empty and it looks like this here and one thing that I'm really glad for, it's a bit hard to see on the camera, but there are a liter markings on the back side, so I can see when I have sparged enough. <laughs> uh, those of you that saw my uh, brewing videos with the Braumeister know that I had to measure from the rim and down how, uh, in centimeters, how full the Braumeister was. And then I guess I can just stop that one again. No more water coming through that uh, valve now. I've turned the heating element up to 84.5%. I'm not tough enough to try 100% the first time I'm using this. And the pump is at 27, but I guess I don't need to pump anymore. Oh yeah, that. True, I should have blocked that one. 
so I could just yeah I've been sparging with the mesh water also in the position I had it I should have turned it that way oh I have uh, I can't uh, do that because I it's too uh, too far to the right side but that means I don't have to pump anymore so I'll turn that one off yeah and then that happened some suck back or something okay so I'll just uh, let uh, the rest of the sparge slash mash water <laughs> flow through the mold pipe yeah I can't believe I didn't think about that because the way the valve was positioned I uh, pumped both sparge water and mash water through the pump and up to the sparge manifold. Okay, so now I have learned that the water is still uh, going through the mold pipe and I can barely see on the back side here uh, that we're about 60 liters now and uh, our target, boil volume target is 75. So we need 15 mo uh, more liters of um, work into the kettle. So at uh, this point of the brew day, I always add some anti-foam uh, to prevent uh, the, the wort from boiling over. This uh, anti-foam contains some silicone that makes, uh, uh, it breaks the tension on the, on the surface of the wort. The first uh, hop edition today is supposed to be a first wort edition. That means uh, that I should add the hops now before it uh, reaches boil. It, uh, you just add them when you have uh, raised up the malt pipe. Haller Tower Mittelfrü. I think that's how the Germans uh, pronounce it. Is the pump off? Yes, the pump is off. Don't pump your pellets. That's uh, words of wisdom. And that was 100 grams and 40 more grams goes into the kettle. 41, that's close enough. So in... Okay, come on. <laughs> can't get the angle enough yeah okay they're in here I have some more sparge water uh, I used uh, the default uh, Brutals B80 Pro profile in Brewfather so it did all the water calculations for me so at this point where I have sparged uh, and mashed with the same liters uh, amount of liters that Brewfather told me um, I have just below 70 liters of boil volume and that's uh, not enough we're having 75 so I'll just take some cold water and just pour on top of this this is about four and a half liters so I'll uh, sparge with cold water so to reach our uh, 74 75 liters of boil volume so we're nearly at 75 liters uh, 73 so I'll just wait to for the last water to uh, drain through the malt pipe and I'm ready to lift uh, out uh, the malt pipe and that's uh, gonna be quite a show I know there's a lot of you that uh, th hopes for the disaster every time I uh, remove my malt pipe uh, we're still at 73 liters and since we're doing the fermenter top up today and since I'm not uh, topping up my fermenter but my uh, B80 uh, I can just adjust I can just adjust uh, the amount of water um, with that top up so I'll remove the mold pipe now and since the mold pipe of the Brutals is wider than my uh, Browmaster mold pipe I have bought this uh, yeah, I don't know the English word for it. Uh, it's the thing you mix the cement in. Murerbalje. This is my murerbalje. So I'll lift it into this. I'll place it on the floor and I'll try to uh, get it <laughs> safely on the ground. Okay, here goes nothing. Uh, I'll adjust it a bit closer. And I will lift it. I hope it's not as heavy now as it was when I lifted it to the sparge position. Okay, I'll help it to the side and then I'll quickly remove it. Shit! It, <laughs> yeah, 
Of course. Of course, of course. Okay. <laughs> and there we go. Yeah. Voila. One of the legs got uh, hung up on the edge here. So I'll have to raise it a bit more before I take it on off the side. Uh, yeah, boil edition. Yeah, okay, I had to do some cleaning and uh, some of the wart that hit the um, display uh, accidentally pushed the confirm button that uh, uh, says, yeah, it's boiling. So b before it has reached boil, uh, the boil time uh, has started to count and it's uh, asking me to do the boil additions, but I can't s tell it that, uh, oh no, that was wrong. I can't seem, yeah, it just tells me the next hop additions. I want to pause it. I want to stop it. That was a mistake. I didn't push the button myself, but that can, I can't see anywhere to do that. I can of course just finish it. Yeah, I think I'll just do that. I'll finish the automatic system, go to manual control. So now it will uh, start uh, boiling again. Yeah, this is the whirlpool from the pump. Um, I'll, I think I'll just stir all this, this uh, hop, uh, hop stuff <laughs> that lies on the top. I'll stir it down to the kettle so we can utilize it. So since the automatic function uh, stopped working, I'll just switch to Brewfather for uh, the boil uh, session. So start boil tracker in Brewfather. Uh, yeah, it told me to add the hops that I already have added. And now uh, Brewfather keeps track of the rest of the brew day. Tells me when to add the hop additions and uh, my uh, whirl flock and stuff like that. And now, we are boiling. Some might say that it's the first time there's a boil in this brewery because the Spidel Braumeister didn't have a very nice boil. Uh, the heating elements were, yeah, maybe a little bit underpowered. I think they were at 3200 watts and here we have 6000 watts. So when the boil is uh, good and ready, I'll just turn down the percentage of the heating element because now it's at a hundred percent yeah and i'm not going to use the steam hat and the condenser today because i haven't uh, gotten all the parts for the steam condenser and to be honest i think a new brewing machine is enough on itself uh, don't want to add uh, that extra difficult level of using a steam condenser for the first time now maybe i can use the steam hat without the condenser so the Steam will get uh, concentrated and sucked out of my ventilation system. Yeah, and I remember I have uh, the turbinator also. Uh, although there's not a lot of hops today, I, I'll use it. I'll just test it. Slide's supposed to be just onto the center and... Ooh. Did it uh, land on the bottom? I don't know. I can see through it, but let's hope so. And then it was the um, steam hat. I don't know if it's any use without the steam condenser, but yeah, you can see the steam gets concentrated through there. But then I know I have to turn down the heating elements to about 60%. I think I read somewhere. Uh, because it takes a lot less uh, energy to keep the, um, the wort boiling with this hat on. Oh yeah, here I'm supposed to do this too. And I'll start my uh, ventilation system. I think I got some wort on the floor. My shoes are sticking to the floor. So I'll leave it there for about 4 to 5 minutes until our 15 minutes uh, hop addition. We are now at about 25 minutes uh, until the end of boil. 
Uh, normally I wouldn't do this before the last 15 minutes, but since it's the first time I use it, I'll now start uh, circulating uh, the boiling wort through the counterflow chiller. Yeah, and I'll also be able to see the wort for the first time through the side glass. And for those of you that uh, has seen my brewing before, know that I have this uh, seed chiller or set chiller or whatever it's called. Uh, and this is a more efficient chiller than uh, Brutal's, uh, the Brutal's chiller. And the reason why I'm not using this one, at least not today, uh, is because the Brutal's chiller is uh, uh, designed to work with the Brutal's machine uh, and it's uh, designed to have less efficiency. The advantage of a less uh, effective chiller is that you can, uh, f the, the flow through the chiller is quicker, it's faster and that way you can have the whirlpool at, while cooling so all the thrub gets collected in the thrubinator uh, in the center. So it's designed that way and that is why I'm using the original Brutal's chiller setup. So to get the wort through the counterflow chiller I have to stop uh, the wort from going that direction. Um, so this is blocked there now and open here and it goes through and it will now is blocked there so I'll block it here instead. Now there's some uh, wort trapped in there I don't know uh, what to do with that uh, right now but this way I can now circulate through the chiller and back into the kettle in the, through the dip tube. And this position is correct, yeah. And also this one. So I can start the pump now. And let's see. Yeah. Something happened. Maybe a bit more. Uh... Wait, that was good. Okay. See here that it's coming, it's not filling the tube all the way, but okay, here's our wart. It looks, uh, the color looks great. Yeah, maybe all the way to 100. Yeah, now we can see uh, this hose got filled all the way and there's no air bubbles in it. I don't know if it was a good idea to use the steam hat today without the steam condenser, but here you can maybe see uh, the wart and you can see it's not. Uh, rolling boil anymore but maybe it's coming now i guess we'll just put it on 100 percent and see how long we need to do that before we have our uh, boil back it's 15 minutes until the end of boil so i'll first i'll add my yeast nutrients and then i'll add two world flock tablets to make the proteins sink and the wort gets uh, clearer and 70 grams of uh, Hallertauer Mittelfru. I took off the steam hat for the last minutes of the boil because I have no better solution for what I'm going to do now. This is my uh, hose for uh, transferring the wort after it's uh, or while it's being chilled to my uni tank and I have connected it here and I have this uh, U-bend to put on the unit tank. And this also seconds as a hook, which I can uh, have there on the brim. And the idea now is I need to sterilize this, sanitize it. And my uh, thought is I'm going to use uh, the boiling uh, wort to do that. So in addition to circulating through this one, which is very hot now, <laughs> I need to circulate through this hose also. So first I'll just turn off my pump. Okay, come on, yeah. And then I'll have to open, uh, open this one. And I'll have to open this one. And by just gravity, you can see that there's coming some wort through the hose. So I'll uh, turn on the pump again. Just keep this secured. 
Yeah. And now the wort gets uh, pumped through the, the hose also. So my hose will get sanitized. So I'll just keep it over the edge there until, uh, yeah, for a few minutes. And here is our uh, yeast, our hero of the day. This is uh, the second step of a two-step starter of WLP833 German book lager that I uh, made uh, about a week ago and it's been cold crashing. Um, so this is uh, the normal uh, amount of yeast cells um, even though I'm uh, going to pressure ferment. Some say that you need more yeast when you pressure ferment and some say you need, need less yeast. But I'll just use the normal amount uh, that has worked for me many times doing uh, pressure fermentation. So I'll do that today. But now I'll decant the starter, the decant the beer off of the yeast that's on the bottom. But first uh, it's time for the second, no, the last uh, hop edition. I got a message from Brewfather on my watch now saying to add the last uh, hop edition. Then it's two minutes uh, until we're finished boiling. Yeah, end of boil. Then I'll just turn off the heating element. The pump is pumping, but I can um, turn off this one. So I'll uh, turn off the pump. Anyway, uh, let's see. Then I'll block access to this. Block. And I'll just start the chiller so we can have that whirlpool effect. And I guess I'll just turn on the water so we can cool uh, things down. Okay, so uh, uh, we can see the temperature on the return. That's down to 50 degrees now. Our cold water is uh, flowing uh, through the counter flow chiller. This is, uh, this is water in and uh, wort out. And this is water out and uh, wort in. And we can see some whirlpooling uh, effects starting. And uh, this temperature with the Z chiller would be something like 15 degrees. So it's obviously a lot less effective. Uh, but uh, the upside is uh, that we can have this uh, nice whirlpool effect to collect all the turb inside of the turbinator. And uh, always a taster starter. I uh, poured some into this glass when I decanted it. It went in the sink, uh, the taste was good, but I'm not going to drink this. It's not that good. Um, it tastes like sweet wort. There's no hops, obviously, in my starter. It's just a grow yeast. But the reason I'm tasting it is uh, because I am uh, uh, I want to taste that there is no infection or something has gone bad with the beer or the yeast. Because then I would just pitch uh, infected beer onto my unit tank and then the whole brew day is just a waste so always taste your starter yeah i almost forgot my uh, fermenter top up today i have calculated that i need 18 liters of water to get the correct amount uh, volume of uh, wort but instead of adding it to my fermenter i will add it here for two reasons uh, the heat from the wort um, kills back any bacteria if there's any bacteria in our water this is just from my tap but our Norwegian tap water is super uh, good quality um, but also it will uh, cool down the rest of the wort, wort uh, faster so 18 liters of this yeah and uh, the real reason why do I do this fermenter top up um, is to get uh, more beer so um, the idea is to brew a wort that's uh, higher gravity than what you want and you just water it down. So on this batch I will get uh, four kegs, uh, 19 liter kegs of beer. So that's more beer in one brew day. 
Uh, and we're almost there. Now we hit the 80 liter mark. And uh, I'm supposed to get 78 liters on my uni. So a little bit more. Okay, now our uh, return temperature is down to 24 degrees centigrade. And uh, my pitch target today is 12 degrees. But I don't think I will be able to chill the wort that much. So I'll, uh, I'll let uh, my glycol chiller do the rest of the cooling job on the uni. So I'll just uh, transfer it at a higher temperature and then I'll cool it there. So I'll prepare my fermenter. I'm just going to uh, detach the pressure relief valve. Yesterday I uh, sanic cleaned this tank, so it's uh, ready to be used today. And I'll see if there's some more sonic clean that wants to get out. Yeah, there's always some more. Yeah, I pumped through a little bit of uh, wort through the transfer hose now, just to have some slightly cooler wort inside the hose right now. But, and I'll uh, attach it to the unit. So you can see the 180 degree bend is uh, nice so we don't have that uh, the hose uh, collapsing. I think uh, it's time to start the transfer. I uh, turned the um, pump down to 34% and then the, temp, uh, the return temperature dropped to 16 degrees. Uh, so I'll start the transfer now. First I'll turn off the pump. And then I'll have to set my valves uh, in a different order. I want the wort that comes out from the chiller uh, not to go in the tank anymore. So I'll block the tank. That opens this one. And this one I will block going further. So now it will go from the counterflow chiller and into my transfer tube. So when I start my pump again at 34% the wort should fall into our uni tank and as you can see it does. It's starting to fail. And the temperature on the return is now 11 degrees. So that's nice and cold. Yeah it will rise because the flow increases, I guess. It was at 16. So now we can see that the wort is getting clearer on the top. There's not that much uh, throob and stuff in the wort uh, anymore. Okay, let's take a look in the uni. And here we can see the wort is transferred. Pour some wort, uh, fresh wort onto my starter and put it on my magnetic uh, stirrer. Also, take my gravity reading out of the unit tank. Look at how clear that wort is. And you can see the turbinator sticking up uh, through the tube there. It's collecting all that uh, junk in the middle of it. And you can see but there, there is uh, some tube on the outside of it also. And you can see now that the dip tube is uh, sticking out and I have to adjust it on the um, handle there so it will collect the wort from a lower lower position. You can see now that it moves while I'm uh, moving it with my hand on the outside. Yeah you can see now that uh, some tube is getting sucked into the dip tube and I have to lower it even more to get the last 
workout. I don't care too much about that. Uh, it's proteins, and I, I think it's uh, it's okay to have some of it uh, on our fermenter because it will just uh, fall to the bottom. Yeah, I think we're finished, so I'll just uh, stop the pump. This is the end result. Uh, yeah, and uh, you can see the turbinator did its job. It landed uh, exactly where it should, and it has collected a lot of uh, those uh, protein stuff. Yeah, and you can see now the level of the turbine inside the turbinator. It flows slowly through the mesh. So I'll just disconnect this, but I'll do it here so I can have my elbow with me. My 180 degree U-bend. Yeah, and then I'll uh, use this uh, oxyband to push uh, oxygen into the unit. And I'll do this for about two minutes. And after that being done, I'm putting a tilt into my fermenter. But shit, I almost forgot to sanitize it first. Half a minute in the star sand solution. Okay, now it's sanitized and in it goes. And last but definitely not least, the yeast. It's been spinning around now for 10 minutes and the yeast has been activated, I hope, from the fresh wort. So, in with our heroes of the day. We'll transform, we'll transform this wort until beer in about a week's time. So, our fermenter looks like this on the inside. You can see that the F80 is almost full. Of course, the foam on the top uh, lies a bit about the level, but I guess it's about uh, 78 liters as I uh, had uh, as target. Yeah, pressure is set on the spending uh, at uh, 0.8 bars. Just fill it with water there so I can see when activity starts. Look at that nice wart. The wart has started to clear up. You can see the proteins uh, in the bottom there. It was all hazy uh, five minutes ago. Uh, and the color and everything looks just super nice. And uh, the efficiency. Uh, my target today on the gravity was uh, 1047. But I had some temperature problems and I didn't match for all that uh, long time. So. Um, Ah, it went from 10.43 to 10.42 now, but this one uh, confirms it's uh, about 10.43, maybe 10.44. So three or four uh, points under uh, a target. And maybe I had too much water in uh, the top up. So it's hard to say exactly what did uh, the numbers go down too much. But I guess it's the mashing. The temperature was too low. It was in the 50s and you can't mash on that low temperature. And to sum up, um, I'm not super happy about the mashing uh, process, uh, the mashing side of the brewing process with the Brutals machine. But uh, after mashing was done, uh, it's super nice to use. The Spidal Brownmaster is easier to mash on. But we gotta remember, it was my very first time mashing on the Brutos machine. So next time, I guess I will have more, uh, definitely I have more experience, but I hope the process will be smoother. But all in all, I'm super happy with the machine. It, the quality and everything is just top notch, super high end stuff. Uh, just gotta figure out the mash uh, process. Um, the rest of the brew day went super nice. Um, except that little uh, glitch uh, when I was uh, removing the mold pipe. Um, and the wart looks super nice and everything is great. And we're about 20 hours into the fermentation time. And uh, you can see in the spending well, it's a uh, nice activity from the yeast. And the pressure is uh, set to about uh, 0 0.8. Bars and uh, 
the gravity is down to 1039. So here is the result of our brule. It's been on the cakes for about a month now and it's starting to clear up. It was fun brewing on the brutals for the first time, but as you might have seen in the video, I need to do something else for my lifting of the mold pipe. So here I have made a new system. As you saw, I had some problems mashing on that first brulee, but now I have had the five brulees and uh, I'm getting uh, the hang of the mashing process as well. So all in all, I'm very happy with uh, exchanging my Spidey Browmaster with uh, this uh, Brutals B80. So let's have a skull and taste the beer. Brutals beer all the way from the B80 to the F80 and it's tasting really good. This beer is one of my favorite beers. Uh, it's perfect for those barbecues and pizza and yeah, food. Basically any food, but it's also a very uh, good beer just to drink on its own. I ended up a few points under the original gravity that I wanted. So this beer uh, has about 4.3% uh, alcohol. But that's just nice, so you can have a few without getting too dizzy in the head. So if you haven't tried this beer style before, you should really do it. It's a beer that I always try to have on one of my taps. So that was it for this episode of The Next Patch. Thank you for watching and a big extra thanks to my patrons. See you guys in the next episode.